Good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Christopher Gillespie, St. John Evangelical Lutheran Church and School Sherman Center in Random Lake, Wisconsin. Before we begin, uh, a note about Holy Week and the liturgies and services of the church during Holy Week. They are a bit longer. And I know this is challenging sometimes, uh, especially for parents with children, but also even just for our short attention span to hunker down, to listen, to meditate upon the words that we're hearing, to remain attentive as those words are being read to us. This is true each day during Holy Week, especially as we take the time to consider each evangelist's unique record of our Lord's passion, suffering, and death. Each evangelist has a different perspective, although they see the same events and on the essentials that our Lord Jesus Christ suffered and died and rose on the third day, they all agree. Some of the details are a little different, and um, that's one thing to help uh, your attention, actually, is to pay attention for those distinctions as we go day to day. Another thing that you might consider doing um, is grabbing a cup of tasty coffee. In my case, uh, this is from the Congo, and, (laughs) um, you know, enjoy the reading, not simply um, consider it a duty or hmm, something that you must do this week, but rather uh, as a privilege and as a blessing and to enjoy it. We begin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 118. uh, Let's actually sing it today. Here's our tone. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is on my side, I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is on my side as my helper. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. All nations surrounded me. In the name of the Lord I cut them off. They surrounded me, surrounded me on every side. In the name of the Lord I cut them off. They surrounded me like bees. They went out like a fire among thorns. In the name of the Lord I cut them off. I was pushed hard so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Glad songs of salvation are in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly The right hand of the Lord exalts. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has disciplined me 
severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, and I will extol you. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Our verse for today is from Job chapter 19. I know that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at last on the earth. And after my skin is destroyed, this I know, that in my flesh I shall see God. Job 19, 25-26 Our Catechism is Commandments 4-10 through 10, and the Table of Duties of Citizens, Matthew 22-21 Romans 13, 5 through 7, 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 3, Titus 3, and 1 Peter 2, 13 and 14. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or his donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. It is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also because of conscience. This is also why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants, who give their full time to governing. Give everyone what you owe him. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. I urge then, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, that we may leave peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior. Remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to do whatever is good. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every authority instituted among men, whether to the king as supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. Our reading is from Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and made us kings and priests to God, to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. 
Amen. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him. Even they who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him, even so. Amen. Our Passion reading for today is from the Passion according to St. Luke, chapter 22 through 23. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew near, which is called Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then Satan entered Judas, surnamed Iscariot, who was numbered among the twelve. So he went his way and conferred with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him to them. And they were glad and agreed to give him money. So he promised and sought opportunity to betray him to them in the absence of the multitude. Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may that we may eat. So they said to him, Where do you want us to prepare? And he said to them, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house which he enters. Then you shall say to the master of the house, The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large furnished upper room there. Make ready. So they went and found it just as he had said to them, and they prepared the Passover. When the hour had come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them, With fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of my betrayer is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to question among themselves which of them it was who would do this thing. Now there was also a dispute among them, as to which of them should be considered the greatest. And he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those who exercise authority over them are called benefactors. But not so among you. On the contrary, he who is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he who governs as he who serves. For who is greater, he who sits at the table, or he who serves? Is it not he who sits at the table? Yet I am among you as the one who serves. But you are those who have continued with me in my trials, and I bestow upon you a kingdom just as my Father bestowed one upon me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail, and when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. But he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you, both to prison and to death. Then he said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day before you deny three times that you know me. And he said to them, When I sent you without money bag, knapsack, and sandals, did you lack anything? They said, Nothing. Then he said to them, But now he who has a money bag, let him take it, and likewise a knapsack, And he who has no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say to you that this which is written must still be accomplished in me. And he was numbered with the transgressors. For the things concerning me have an end. So they said, Look, here, Lord, look, here are two swords. And he said to them, It is enough. Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives, as he was accustomed, and his disciples also followed him. When he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. 
and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. When he rose up from prayer and had come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. Then he said to them, Why do you sleep? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. And while he was still speaking, behold, a multitude, and he who was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near to Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When those around him saw what was going to happen, they said to him, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus answered and said, Permit even this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, captains of the temple, and the elders who had come to him, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you daily in the temple, you did not try to seize me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Having arrested him, they led him and brought him into the high priest's house. But Peter followed at a distance. Now when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. And a certain servant girl, seeing him as he sat by the fire, looked intently at him and said, This man was also with him. But he denied him, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And after a little while, another saw him and said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then after about an hour had passed, another confidently affirmed, saying, Surely this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are saying. Immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So Peter went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who held Jesus mocked him and beat him, and having blindfolded him, they struck him on the face and asked him, saying, Prophesy, who is the one who struck you? And many other things they blasphemously spoke against him. As soon as it was day, the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, came together and led him into their council, saying, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he said to them, If I tell you, you will by no means believe. And if I ask you, you will by no means answer me or let me go. Hereafter, the Son of Man will sit on the right hand of the power of God. Then they all said, Are you then the Son of God? So he said to them, You rightly say that I am. And they said, Then what further testimony do we need? For we have heard it ourselves from his own mouth. Then the whole multitude of them arose and led him to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to pay taxes to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ, a king. Then Pilate asked him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him and said, It is as you say. So Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowd, I find no fault in this man. But they were more fierce, saying, He stirs up the people teaching throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked if the man were a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. Now, when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceedingly glad, for he had desired for a long time to see him, because he had heard many things about him, and he had hoped to see some miracle done by him. Then he questioned him with many words, but he answered him nothing. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him. Then Herod, with his men of war, treated him with contempt and mocked him, arrayed him in a gorgeous robe, and sent him back to Pilate. That very day, Pilate and Herod became friends with each other, for previously they had been at enmity with each other. 
Then Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, said to them, I have brought this man to me, you have brought this man to me, as one who misleads the people. And indeed, having examined him in your presence, I have found no fault in this man concerning those things of which you accuse him. No, neither did Herod, for I sent you back to him, and indeed nothing deserving of death has been done by him. I will therefore chastise him and release him, for it was necessary for him to release one of them to them at the feast. And they cried, all cried out at once, saying, Away with this man and release for us Barabbas, who had been thrown into prison for a certain rebellion made in the city and for murder. But Pilate, therefore, wishing to release Jesus, again called out to them, and they shouted out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Then he said to them the third time, Why? What evil has he done? I have found no reason for death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. But they were insistent, demanding with loud voices that he be crucified, and the voices of these men and of the chief priests prevailed. So Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they requested. And he released to them the one they requested, who for rebellion and murder had been thrown into prison. But he delivered Jesus to their will. Now, as they led him away, they laid hold of a certain man, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming from the country. And on him they laid the cross, that he might bear it after Jesus. And a great multitude of the people followed him, and women who also mourned and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For indeed the days are coming in which they will say, Blessed are the barren, wombs that never bore, and breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if if they do these things in the green wood, what will be done in the dry? There were also two others, criminals, led with him to be put to death. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him, and the criminals, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots, and the people stood looking on. And, but even the rulers and with them sneered, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Christ, the chosen of God. The soldiers also mocked him, coming and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And an inscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin and Hebrew, this is the king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other, answering, rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we received the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. Then the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. So when the centurion saw what had happened, he glorified God, saying, Certainly, this was a righteous man. And the whole crowd who came together to that sight, seeing what had been done, beat their breasts and returned. But all his acquaintances and the women who followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. Now behold, There was a man named Joseph, a council member, a good and just man. He had not consented to their decision and deed. He was from Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen, and laid it in a tomb that was hewn out of the rock, 
where no one had ever lain before. That day was the preparation, and the Sabbath drew near. And the women who had come with him from Galilee followed after, and they observed the pas- of the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and fragrant oils, and they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. There ends the Passion according to St. Luke. Our hymn for this week is A Lamb Goes Uncomplaining Forth, again by Paul Gerhardt, um, who served a congregation during the midst of a pandemic, the Black Plague, uh, and writes a wonderful reflection on Isaiah 52, 53, and John 1, with a delightful dialogue between the Father and the Son. Today, let's actually uh, read the, the hymn without tune as poetry. A lamb goes on complaining forth, the guilt of sinners bearing, and laden with the sins of earth, none else the burden sharing, goes patient on, grows weak and faint, to slaughter, led without complaint, that spotless life to offer. He bears the stripes, the wounds, the lies, the mockery, and yet replies, all this I gladly suffer. This lamb is Christ, the soul's great friend, the Lamb of God, our Savior, whom God the Father chose to send to gain for us his favor. Go forth, my son, the Father said, and free my children from their dread of guilt and condemnation. The wrath and stripes are hard to bear, but by your passion they will share the fruit of your salvation. Yes, Father, yes, Most willingly I'll bear what you command me. My will conforms to your decree. I'll do what you have asked me. O wondrous love, what have you done? The Father offers up his Son, his his Son desiring our salvation. O love, how strong you are to save. You lay the one into the grave who built the earth's foundation. Lord, When your glory I shall see and taste your kingdom's pleasure. Your blood, my royal robe, shall be my joy beyond all measure. When I appear before your throne, your righteousness shall be my crown. With these I need not hide me. And there in garments richly wrought as your own bride shall we be brought to stand in joy beside you. We confess together our common Christian faith and show love for one another by confessing together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. A collect for today, we pray. Merciful and everlasting God, you did not spare your only Son, but delivered him up for us all, to bear our sins on the cross. Grant that our hearts may be so fixed with steadfast faith in him that we fear not the power of sin, death, and devil. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray for the most vulnerable among us. Gracious Father in heaven, your Son taught us that As we serve the least among us, we serve him incognito. We pray for the most vulnerable in our communities, our elderly, our sick, those who live in the streets and in tents, those who are isolated. Forgive us when we have forgotten them in our haste to fill our own cupboards. As your compassionate heart is turned toward the poor, the widowed, the least, the lost, and the lowly, Turn our hearts toward them, too, and make us instruments of your goodness. 
Teach us to see Christ and our neighbor in need. Hear us. In the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who by his poverty, weakness, and death won life for us all. Amen. We pray for our scientists and researchers. Gracious Lord, creator of the cosmos, maker of all things visible and invisible, who in holy wisdom orders and sustains all things in wondrous and grand diversity and splendor, in your lavish grace you have given man the gifts of reason and senses to plumb the wondrous mysteries of your creation. Bless those whose vocation is the study of viruses, diseases, and their cure and containment. Grant them wisdom, perseverance, and clarity that their efforts would serve to protect and preserve life and increase knowledge and understanding. With knowledge comes responsibility, as well as fear and humility. Teach us to use our knowledge in wisdom and faithfulness. Protect our scientists and medical researchers from any harm or danger that their work might entail, and grant your benevolent blessing upon this work. For your name's sake, we pray. Amen. We pray also for marriage and family, that husbands and wives, parents and children live in ordered harmony according to the word of God, for parents who must rear their children alone, for our communities and our neighborhoods. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are also bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. From thy, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for our congregation at prayer. That's a blessing each and every day. I know it's sometimes challenging with the way that uh, our technology works, <laughs> but it does work, and it is, uh, at this time especially, a blessing to us that we can gather in this limited and non-corporeal, <laughs> that is bodily, uh, way. I look forward to tomorrow. In the morning, we'll have our daily prayer, but also in the evening at 7 p.m., we'll have a Maundy Thursday of service on Friday, uh, we'll have our prayer in the morning, and then at 1 p.m., our chief service, recognizing our Lord's precious suffering, death, and burial. And then in the evening, we'll have a tenebrae service, a reading of psalms uh, and prayer. On Saturday morning, we'll have our daily prayer, but then in the evening, again, we'll have a Vesper service. This time, though, um, it's a vigil. It's an Easter vigil, and this was uh, an exciting service, actually, and I think it will be a great blessing to you to tune in then here from our home. And then, of course, join us for Easter Sunday at 9.30 a.m., our normal service time. Lord be with you all, and we'll see you soon.